Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll focus on one of the most fundamental practices in machine learning, cross-validation, also known as n-fold cross-validation or k-fold cross-validation. Cross-validation is a technique that is used in many areas of machine learning. We'll use it specifically for choosing the best set of parameters for our support vector classifier. Nonetheless, I believe it's important to know the general meaning of cross-validation and its different applications. That way, no matter where you encounter it on your journey through data science and machine learning, you'll know precisely why and how cross-validation is used. With that in mind, let's start with two of the most common uses of cross-validation. First, say you have an already labeled data set and you wish to train two machine learning models on it and choose which one performs best. What would likely happen if we used only one training set is that one of the models would perform better on it. However, it is often the case that during testing on a new data set, the model won't perform as well as compared to the training phase. A lot of the time, the reason for that is the model will have incorporated some of the bias from the training data, and as a result, it is unable to generalize with the same accuracy on a new data set during testing. Or consider the following. You want to train a machine learning model on your data, but don't have a large enough sample size. Now you might be thinking that in this data-driven day and age, it's the abundance of data that causes problems rather than not having enough of it. And you'd be right in most cases. However, there are areas where not having enough data is still an issue. In life sciences, for example, getting a large enough sample is often easier said than done. To obtain data, we need to devise experiments which are often time-consuming and expensive. I remember one time during my studies when I found myself in a room with a group of biologists, computer scientists, and machine learning engineers. One of the biologists had gathered data from an experiment and was trying to gain insights from it with the help of the computer science and machine learning department. The experiment had been run twice, which is standard practice, to make sure that none of the data gathered was the result of human error or caused by external factors. One of the computer scientists suggested at this point that the biologist simply run the experiment 10 more times, as this will result in having more data as well as more reliable results. The biologist then had to explain that running each experiment required about six months and a considerable amount of money, so doing that 10 times over was not really an option. But what if there was a way to artificially increase the amount of training data we have without actually sampling new points? Enter cross-validation. The idea of cross-validation is based on splitting our data into n or k equal parts and then creating new variations of it. That's why you'll often see the term n-fold or k-fold cross-validation. n and k show us into how many parts we've split our data. Okay, let's see exactly how this works. Say we have a data set of 200 observations. Now we can split the data into five equal parts and then divide it into two data sets, one containing four parts, and the other, the remaining fifth part. In essence, we partition the data into a new training and validation set. So we train a model on the four parts and evaluate its performance on the fifth. What's great is that we can split the data in many different ways using this approach. This effectively means that we're not only creating one new pair of training and validation sets, but rather five new sets. This way, we're able to train a model on each of these different sets, evaluate its performance on the validation sets, and in the end, take the average performance of our algorithm across all five data sets. By the way, you can freely choose how many parts you'd like to split the data into. Most commonly, a 5 or 10 split is preferred, so you're likely to see the terms 5-fold or 10-fold cross-validation a lot. You can also go as far as to split the data by leaving only one sample as validation and perform different variations on the training and validation split. This is known as leave one out cross-validation. Excellent. All right, now let's talk about another instance where employing cross-validation might be beneficial, hyperparameter tuning. In case you're wondering, hyperparameters are the input parameters of our machine learning algorithm, and finding the best set of them is referred to as tuning. In practice, this is almost always done using cross-validation. What we do is test out different sets of values for each parameter and then compare their performance on the train sets using cross-validation. Once again, the reason for using different training data sets is to avoid picking up bias. Instead, we try out k variations on the data, average the results, and then choose the model with the best set of parameters. 
That's a way to ensure this set of parameters will perform best overall, not just on a particular training set. At this point, you might be wondering, is hyperparameter tuning always necessary? When we're employing algorithms with several parameters, as in the case of ensemble learners like XGBoost, or when we have a deep learning algorithm like a neural network, then hyperparameter tuning is a must. Of course, if we are dealing with an algorithm that does not have a lot of parameters, which can be optimized, as in the case of a logistic regression or a naive Bayes algorithm, then cross-validation might not be necessary, simply because we don't have a lot of parameters to optimize. Thank you.